About to uh, change some gears here and uh, welcome in an old friend. I don't think we've talked to this guy in a while, have we? It's been a while since, uh, and we, we're not going to go through all the things that he's gotten right or wrong, but he did get this one right. Michael Bratton joining us. Um, Michael, I uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, you look a little happy with the news about Jimbo Fisher <laughs> losing his job. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. You have me on anytime, Paul, but especially on this Jimbo Fisher Monday. Uh, I know if I was a Texas A&M fan, I'd be over the moon right now because uh, the Aggies were certainly never a threat as long as Jimbo Fisher was riding the sidelines there in College Station. I think last time I said, Paul, he, they fixed the offense because they hired Bobby Petrino to coach quarterbacks and call the plays. I thought that was Jimbo's job. Uh, now, if we just get someone to, to take game situations, timeouts, when to go for it, we take that away from Jimbo, we're cooking. And, and thankfully, we took a step forward this weekend in, in letting him go. So uh, that is a one coach down. Zach Arnett, of course, replaced. We, we've had that conversation. As far as Jimbo's replacement, Michael, that's the, the parlor game right now. I, I, you know, people, uh, for whatever reason, like to talk about coaches on the hot seat, but, they, but they, what they really like is trying to figure out who the next person is. Uh, in your uh, brilliant <laughs> crystal ball, uh, who you got? Well, I do enjoy it, Paul, all these sites and writers and, and what have you that just throw stuff against the wall. And, and I'm generally not that, that guy, but you're asking me to do it. So I'll do it for you, Paul. Uh, Urban Meyer, I mean, for the content, would be pure gold, but uh, he is a winner. Uh, oh, it, hold on, light. hold on. My, Michael, time out. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Because I thought you said Urban Meyer. Well, if we're throwing ethics and uh, all this out the window, we're just trying to beat Nick Saban finally. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think he could do much better. I, I would say Lane Kiffin, but he can't win a big game. So he's worthless to Texas A&M. Uh, but, you know, in all seriousness, Paul, one guy, and I have no idea if he's on the radar. I don't know if he's attainable. But if you could get him, Braum, up there at Louisville, who was obviously at Purdue before that. He's a good coach. He is He's one heck of a coach, offensive-minded. I, I think he'd be a perfect fit if you can get him. We all know the ACC is dead in the water when uh, Florida State and North Carolina, all these teams leave. If he doesn't want to stay at that G5 league, he'll come to the SEC. <laughs> Michael Bratton joining us, a man for all seasons. Uh, Michael, uh, th those are some interesting names. Let me, let me uh, bounce around a little bit because I see your – power rankings every week, and I thought I was dreaming. This is what uh, Brad has. He's got, for those of you rate it riding in the car on the radio, he goes uh, Vanderbilt, Mississippi State, Arkansas, South Carolina, Auburn, Florida, Kentucky, A&M. He's including Texas and Oklahoma, which is very clever of him. Tennessee at eight, Oklahoma, Texas, LSU five, Ole Miss four, Alabama three, Missouri two and Georgia one. For some reason, I can just imagine in Shelby, Alabama, south of Birmingham, the Budweiser dropping out of Larry's hand and starting to dial the number here. How can you rank Alabama below Missouri is our, is, is our question. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the way I do this, Paul, if they met on a neutral field tomorrow, who would I pick to win the football game? And, and give me Missouri. I mean, they just thrashed Tennessee – to a level I think uh, not even Alabama did. They have went down to Athens, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the two-time national champions here. They've come the closest to knocking Georgia off. I am wildly impressed with Coach Drink and everything he's done this season in Columbia. So Missouri, Alabama, they meet on a neutral field tomorrow. It's a shame we won't get the game, but uh, I'd pick Missouri to win outright over the Crimson Tide. Michael, I don't want to be that guy because uh, a lot of us uh, had criticism of Nick Saban uh, after that uh, two-week uh, debacle after Texas and, and South Florida, but you're the only one. I mean, the only one who described it as a decaying dynasty. You still subscribing to that? Well, I don't think they hand out dynasties for uh, winning a division title, but if, they still, if they're doing that <laughs> now in Tuscaloosa, I was dead wrong. This is a, a dynasty in, in full tilt here, Paul, as they're, uh, de, you know, the, the East champion is – is very likely going to be Georgia again. They're probably going to win three national championships in a row. And I'll admit, I was dead wrong on Alabama. Jalen Milrose has been a revelation. He need, he should be getting some Heisman buzz for the progression he's made this season. But, yeah, when they lose to Georgia 
and Georgia goes on to win the SEC, win the national championship, they can tout how wrong I was as, as they got this strong dynasty that's runner up to Georgia once again. I don't even think Alabama will make the playoff, but maybe that's how we're de deciding uh, dynasties there in Tuscaloosa. Well, I mean, you, you, you would or you would not agree that uh, this has been a remarkable comeback for Nick Saban and, and his program, or you wouldn't agree to that. Apparently, you don't seem that impressed. Well, they're certainly playing a championship uh, level in the second half. Now, they're, they're getting down to all these teams. But, uh, yeah, no, it, it has certainly been impressive because uh, I, I'm among those. I, I would give coach of the year to drink, but I think probably runner-up is Nick Saban. But at the same time, I could say, well, whose fault is it that uh, we didn't have a quarterback early? Whose fault is it that we got Tommy Reese as offensive coordinator? It's not like, uh, you know, these were Saban decisions that, that backfired miserably early on. But full credit to him for – for turning it around and winning the West uh, just in time to uh, get thrashed by Georgia and Atlanta. I, I can't wait for that. I can't wait to have uh, you sitting with us uh, right before that game. Michael, uh, I must uh, go to Tennessee next. I know how much you love the, the Big Orange. Um, tough game Saturday against Drink. Uh, what was I watching? Mm. Yeah, I'm starting to waver. I, I used to think Josh Heupel was an elite coach, Paul, but uh, – Losing in the fashion they did to Missouri, losing in the fashion they did to Florida, getting completely outclassed by Alabama in the second half. I'm, I'm starting to waver, uh, and, and who knows what's going to happen on Saturday, Paul, but I would be shocked if Tennessee is even competitive in the second half against the Georgia Bulldogs in Neyland Stadium. So if they get thrashed on, on Saturday, I, now certainly I'm not saying we <laughs> fire Josh Heupel or anything, but uh, you know it's fair to question. Was that a one-hit wonder? Have, have teams kind of figured him out? Uh, I don't know. They, they didn't look like they wanted any part of Missouri on Saturday, Paul. And that's that's troubling because that's a team I think Tennessee fans expect to beat Missouri year annually. I don't care where that game's played. We're talking to Michael Bratton here. And, uh, you know, I don't know why uh, I was so prescient to think that uh, in Shelby County, Alabama, a man would, would be sitting there wanting to uh, get a piece of you. Uh, are you, are you. Are you good to say hello to your friend? Of course. I, I think I owe him some beers, too. Okay. Larry, you're on with, with Brad. Hey, what's up, Brad? You wrong every kind of way, brother. You are just off. Yeah, I mean, you ain't even close to being. You're a pinhead. You know what a pinhead is? It's your head and your brain about the size of a pin on the end of that. It be bitty. Because you ain't got no walk around sense, boy. I, I tell you what, you spend a week with me and I'll get you coordinated. I'm telling you, I'll slap you around a little bit, drink some Bud Lights and go out and party something and get you down. Woo! Now, what do you think? You want me to straighten your ass out? <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. I, I can't argue with that, Paul. I mean, everything he said is, is right based on everything I've said about Alabama, but I just know I'm not going to be wrong in this uh, upcoming SEC championship now, game. Now, Brad, uh, how about a little money this time? How about a little moolah moolah? You want to put some cash down? I know your mommy won't like it. Hold on, Larry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Brad, Brad, I mean, clearly Georgia will be favored probably by a few, mm -hmm. not that much, because uh, so you, you really do believe Georgia will put a pounding on Alabama? Yeah, I think I said 20 points before. I'm, I'm going to back off that, Paul. I'd say more like 14. I think Georgia will probably win by 14 points in Atlanta. What about yeah, it, Larry? better back off more than that. <laughs> hey, you think you want to have that quarterback in you? Bam! Hey, that's what's going to happen to Georgia. Hey, listen here, brother. That defense is mean. They are mean, downright ass mean. And I'm going to tell you something, Georgia's out there like a bunch of plates, you know, throwing the ball here, and everybody's open they're throwing to. They ain't had no real defense on that ass. And, Bratton, how about 100 bucks? Ooh. Ooh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm down yeah, for that, Larry. Now, Larry, Larry, be, let me make sure. I don't want to. I don't want anybody, any young people to think I'm condoning gambling. I don't do it myself. That's what I'm um, But are you? Uh, is this? A, are you taking the bet straight up, Larry? Just uh, winner of the game? Yeah, I don't need no damn. He better be trying to get some points. His <laughs> ass is dead meat, son. Woo! You dead in the water, Jack. You like one of them old, old 
Now, uh, now Larry, um, let me ask you, I got I to gotta, I gotta do my job as the umpire here. You have the 100 bucks right. to pay up if, <laughs> if, uh, if, Brat loses, if Brat wins the bet, right? Right. I owe my damn beer, too, Brat. Yeah, 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 I don't know. That. Is this even legal, Paul? I don't know, but I, I'm and in Brad, favor based of it. on that backdrop you got there, I have to ask you the same question. You do have 100 bucks. <laughs> I, it may take me a couple of days, but I, I can I can get it, Paul. I can get it. Okay. You know more from your mommy. <laughs> okay, Larry. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, Brad. I did. I mean, I give you credit. No, no other guest is willing to get in the ring with a seventy-seven-year-old guy with uh, with four pacemakers. We got to be careful, Paul. I mean, he's liable to take our our jobs uh, with with that kind of analysis that uh, we're getting from Larry. I mean, that was, uh, I mean, that that was great. Hey, Brad, uh, I've I've heard worse with some of the folks lately uh, <laughs> around college football. <laughs> it is. Uh, I I can't wait for that game though, Paul. I, I plan on being down there at uh, you know the, the final time. It's East versus West. Maybe it should be Alabama Georgia. And uh, who knows? I mean, if there's one team that's going to beat Georgia, I, I don't think there's any of these Big Ten teams, ACC, Pac-12, get get out of here with that. I, I think the only threat to Georgia is Alabama. So that should be one heck of a game, and they may as well just crown the national championship in Atlanta uh, that night, in my opinion. That I agree with you on. Uh, Brad, we, will, uh, we may see you before then. I don't know. We're coming up to, to your uh, part of the country this weekend, so let us know if you're around. Absolutely, yeah. I plan on being there. I don't know if you've seen the slate, Paul, but the, there, there's, it's it's hard to hype up uh, the SEC schedule this weekend. Well, it's better than it used to be. I mean, there there was a time when there may have been only there were no good games. At least we we have we not only in addition to that we've got a really interesting game in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, Billy Napier is zipping in there for a showdown. Yeah, it may be his last time to a uh, Columbia. Who knows, Paul? I, I don't believe they got South Carolina on the schedule next uh, season. But, uh, yeah, Billy Napier, he's got a, one heck of a recruiting class. Uh, you know, they're, they're losing recruits daily now at this point in time. But that that is something he's got to hang his hat on. So, um, hey, Florida fans, I, I think they're they're dying to see uh, who, th who their next coach is going to be. They're, I'm getting asked that daily. Well, that way, it was at this juncture two years ago, uh, the, the next day after the loss to Missouri, with that now ESPN commentator Dan Mullen was, was shown the door. Can we get Dan Mullen back in Gainesville? <laughs> with Billy Napier's recruits, I mean, I think we might have something there. Well, we could just make Napier the recruiting coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Bratton, we'll see you this weekend. Thanks, Michael, joining us Absolutely. from that SEC podcast. Never. Never a dull moment and never a secure coach when, when Brad is on the show. We'll take a short break.